Aloha, it's Robert Stellick with Blue Planet Surf. Today's video is about our weekly Wednesdays training group where we actually go surfing with the race boards. Usually on Wednesdays we'll do either a downwinder when it's windy or we'll do a two mile, two mile time trial in Monola Bay. But this day the waves are big so we decided we're going to do um, only half the time trial and then surf for the rest of the, the time we had. So going out through the channel, there's already some big waves coming through. Here I made the mistake of slowing down and not pointing my nose straight into the wave. So I, I, the wave just pushes me sideways. So if you're going out through the white water, you want to always point your nose straight into the white water and try to keep some forward momentum so it doesn't throw you off sideways. Um, before we went out, we we d went did some coaching and went over some pointers on surfing waves on race boards on bigger boards it's a little bit different in surfing than on a shorter stand-up surfboard the advantage is that you you know you got more speed on a race board so you can catch the waves further outside um, you can kind of paddle into them a little bit earlier and you can also maintain the speed through kind of flat sections if the uh, wave kind of flattens out a little bit um, the disadvantage is it's not as maneuverable and it's easy to get kind of stuck and um, get flipped over if you don't go straight down the line so you have less maneuverability for sure but this bay um, this wave here at Monola Bay it's really nice because it breaks outside and then kind of backs off a little bit and then it reforms a couple times so you can get a really long ride sometimes from all the way outside the bay by the blinker buoy to all the way inside by the inside reef so it's a fun wave to surf on race boards or People um, use outriggers too to paddle out there, or kayaks, surf skis. So it's a fun, fun wave, and it's a good place to practice riding on on a race board. Here you can see um, kind of where it backs off. You have to paddle hard to stay on the wave. There's rolling next to me, um, and then and then it kind of gets steep again on the inside. So sometimes you have to um, also move the weight back and forth a lot. Uh, and move the weight forward to stay on the wave and then once the wave gets steeper again move back so same thing when you ca when I'm catching the wave I'm a little bit more in a parallel stance once I'm on the wave I switch to the surf stance and then here I move my weight back to keep the nose from purling and then going through the white water kind of crouching down using the uh, blade for skimming the blade for stability next to me and then also moving the weight back and forth to keep the nose from purling basically on a longer board you always have to do that dance um, front to back dance to keep the nose from purling but keep the board in trim so you stay on the wave of course we weren't catching waves the whole time here we're waiting for a set there's Jeff Chang he has the 14 by 30 bump rider wide and I'm on the 14 by 28 bump rider and the bump rider is a great board for surfing because it has like a high volume nose and a nice amount of rocker um, it's basically made for downwinders but it also works really good in the surf because um, just because of that little extra rocker compared to a flat water race board um, and then it also has nice surfy rails a little bit thinner rails and a lot of uh, flat water boards so it's uh, pretty fun to ride in the surf compared to other race boards and uh, you know when I get all the way in the back like here you can see me moving back once and then jumping back a little bit more again so as this, the wave gets steeper I move my weight more back and then as the wave flattens out here you can see me moving forward again and then doing a little cut back so obviously you can't do big turns on, on a race board but you can do little left to right turns here the nose goes under bracing keeping myself from getting thrown over the handlebars forward as the board slows down and then it kind of pushes through that uh, pushes through it so nice thing about the bump rider is that fat high volume nose that that kind of comes out of the water pretty easily again if, if you do submerge it um, so you just have to be ready for that rapid deceleration when the nose goes in the water and once they just throw you off forward <clears throat> so the conditions were pretty windy that day and like it seemed like the wind got kind of a little bit stronger in the afternoon so there was a lot of waves that we were trying to paddle go for but then kind of 
getting blown out the back um, and just because the wind the wind is so strong that you really have to paddle hard to make the drop and uh, it's kind of tricky because if you're not if the wave isn't steep enough you get blown out the back uh, but then if you're too late then the white water catches up with you and, and you can't really make the drop if you're too late I'm using a coil leash which is probably not the best choice for uh, surfing better to use a straight leash I just didn't have one in my car coil leashes get all tangled up and messed up here you can see I'm trying to catch a wave after it breaks uh, makes it much harder and here I'm getting blown out the back so you want to catch the wave when it's steep so you don't get blown out the back but not too steep here uh, you can't really see but I went right on the drop and I turned back to the left um, turning back to the right again so I'm actually kind of surfing it a little bit straightening out again with the white water trying to stay straight when the white water is catching up to you you definitely want to be at a right angle to the wave so you don't get thrown you don't get flipped over by the wave um, so yeah those are just a few pointers hope that helped out thanks for watching give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll see you next saturday aloha